get uh, we're going to start off uh, this evening's session with um, a short slide presentation on alternates. Um, Linda and Madeline, you might have already seen this, but you know, just bear with the rest of us. Okay, this is a slide presentation put together by my colleague Kat McGill, to which I have added a few uh, extra slides at the end. So we're talking tonight about being green and trying to get away from using the uh, floral oasis. And why have we changed our minds? Well, everybody's trying to be green. Everybody's trying to help the earth. And floral foam, any floral foam we've used, is still sitting in a landfill. Um, Oasis, which is the brand we normally deal with, are working on a biodegradable foam, but they haven't really got there yet. And it's, it's expensive. In this slide deck, if we know who the designer is, we have credited them. Um, visible use of water. A very simple bowl with water and leaves and a few flowers. There's no foam. It's a visible use of water, a very simple arrangement you could do for a table or a hall. Wire and string. There's nothing that prevents you from creating an armature out of pieces of wire, bits of string, to create a structure to hold up your plant material. Uh, a lot of you may be familiar with Kenzans, the Japanese uh, spiky frog, which is literally means sword mountain. Uh, they are used in not only Ikebana, but a lot of other designs. And they are definitely very green because they are reusable. They come in plastic, they come in metal. Uh, hunt around, you may find some. Occasionally they show up in thrift shops and garage sales. There are some modern versions of uh, Kenzans. It's anything that helps you hold plant material up that you can reuse as opposed to something we're gonna throw in the garbage. You're not limited with Kenzans to using one. You can use multiple Kenzans in containers depending on the size of your container. Uh, you can combine structures in Kenzans. So there's no, no right or no wrong. Um, gel beads you can use and are reusable. You have to be a little careful with color. You see here, the pink kind of dominates, but a clear gel bead works quite nicely if you have a nice tall arrangement and you're not holding too much material. Uh, tape grids, I'll do an example of a tape grid tonight. Um, very simple process, frequently used by florists on bouquets. Simply floral tape, clear or green, made into a grid pattern. Uh, reusable grids, like a plastic grid. I was hunting around today looking for things. And I, I think you could likely find things at the dollar store that are a grid function that you could cut down to fit on top of containers easily. Uh, moss and twigs. You can form, in this case, it's some wire, some twigs. There's a moss base there that's holding the plant material, holding the moisture. The big trick is you have to have something that's moist to provide the moisture your plant material needs. Uh, sand, uh, wet sand will work in a pave design, doesn't work in too many other designs. The idea being the damp sand will hold the plant material in place. Uh, and with pave, you're working with very low flat design, so sand will work. Just plain twigs, cut a whole bunch of twigs, different heights, different uh, um, widths. Pack a nice container full of it and then drop in your flowers. This time of year, tulips and daffodils, this would look lovely. Armatures are a little more elaborate. They take a little bit more work. You have to build the structures, but the structure becomes part of the design and you can usually take them apart and reuse them, repurpose them. There's metal armatures, wooden armatures. Here's a simple example of using 
eggshells and branches with spring blooms. Very simple concept. It's anything but using petrochemical foam. A simple branch may create enough structure to hold your plant material. Chicken wire, good old chicken wire. You can shape it. We've all worked with this at our Christmas design classes. And you simply scrunch it up, put it in your container, a little bit of tape on it to hold it in place, and you're away to the races. And you can reuse chicken wire. Chicken wire does come in colors. So in this case, it's a lovely uh, contrast of uh, color that goes very nicely. It becomes part of the structure. And you can spray paint your own chicken wire if you want to create a very specific look. Moss inside chicken wire gives you a very natural looking element. You can then insert your stems into the moss. Water tubes. Here we've got a wire structure. Water tubes become part of the structure and you add your very simple plant material. This would look very pretty down the center of a dining room table or on a buffet table. Uh, tubes. Just cover tubes, group them together, create a grouping. Simple ribbon around clear glass works very well. It's The idea is to think outside the box and try things a little different. I have never worked with wood straw, but apparently it will absorb moisture and is very natural looking. And the most recent product on the market is called Sidu. Uh, it is a uh, alternative. It's biodegradable. It's out. Uh, it's made out of basalt, good old rock, and either beet juice, beetroot, or um, sugarcane acts as the binder that binds it. And it's called Agro Wool. And when I show it to you, you'll see why agri-wool. It's just becoming available now in Canada. Um, it's brown. It sort of looks like insulation, but it's 90% basalt and 3% organic binders. Um, we've been bringing it in. The OHA has been bringing it in from um, a supplier in Winnipeg because there aren't any Ontario suppliers just yet for uh, the product. But um, I know that Kat McGill has been in touch, Rose O'Dell. We're working with uh, AgriWool International out of the Netherlands to see if we can find suppliers in Ontario so it'll become easier to get a hold of. But if you get in touch with me or get in touch with Rose O'Dell, um, you can order it. And I see I have a helper tonight that I may have to ask leave the room. My assistant, Lily Cat, is here. So I will have Lily step out of the room and I'm going to demonstrate a few uh, different uh, methods of working without floral foam. Okay, Cat. <laughs> She's very helpful loves flowers, but she can't design at all. So we talked about um, Kenzans. So I'm going to do a parallel design. And um, I'm going to use Kenzan. I'm going to use a piece of chicken wire. And I'm going to use a piece of agarwool. Uh, it's very light. When you toss it in water, it um, soaks the water up really quickly. It holds a lot of water. Just don't try and squeeze the water out of it because you'll flatten it and you'll lose its uh, texture. But it does. You drop it in water, it immediately, much faster than Oasis, soaks up the water. And good old chicken wire. You can add chicken wire to any container you want. So um, for this parallel design, I'm gonna show you how to work with three 
different non oasis materials and we'll talk a little bit about parallel designs while we're at it um Grits. Penny, could I interrupt for one second? Yes. Would, is there any way that Howard can make you uh, take up the entire screen? I'm watching on an iPad and you're an inch and a half by oh. two inches. Um, I, I actually, the top of my head is basically at the top of Howard's screen. My, my <laughs> okay, table is I thought I did sound. Uh, sorry. Um, a grid pattern. I used green tape just to demonstrate it. If I were actually doing this in a show, I would use clear tape on a white container because it wouldn't be as visible. Reusable plastic type grids. You just can attach them to the top of a container, wash them off, reuse it. So, Parallel design, the idea, this is going to be a vegetative parallel design as opposed to a decorative design. So the idea is things should look natural and it's springtime. So I'm going to work with daffodils because we had enough heat this last day that the daffodils have just all popped miraculously quickly. Parallel design, your materials should be in groupings. Each grouping, there should be a clear space so that you can see the groupings. And the idea is you're looking for height. And then we'll talk about basing. Basing is how you cover the base of a design so that we don't see the mechanics because you don't want the judge to see your mechanics. So I'm putting a grouping of daffodils together. So this is one spring component. In the agri wool, I'm going to uh, work with some beautiful Persithia that also has just popped. Now, the trip, trick with the agri wool is uh, if it's a stem that's fairly thick, you're okay. You cut it on a, a sharp angle. So as you put it in the agri wool, it goes in carefully. If you are trying to put smaller material into agar wool, uh, one of the best things to use is a little wooden skewer. Create a little hole. I'll show you that in another smaller design. And add your plant material into the hole that you have created. The agar wool is fairly easy to work with. If you take something out of agar wool, it doesn't disintegrate the same way Oasis does. Um, the thing with Oasis is you have to be very careful not to puncture too many holes where you don't want your holes. So there's some tones of yellow. And what would spring be without some pussy willows? So I'm going to put the pussy willows into the chicken wire. Now this may be the most challenging of the three. I think I need to add another piece of floral tape to hold my chicken wire down. So this is as if we're looking out in our garden and lo and behold, the pussy willows are up, the forsythia is out, and the daffodils are just popping. Now I will say the chicken wire is the most challenging and you may have to work 
a little bit with getting just the right spacing in your chicken wire. This is a piece I've used before, so it's been a, a little extra crumpled. Okay. And I am going to put another piece of floral tape on it because it's, it's slip sliding around. One of the challenges of working with green designs is that transportation. You know how hard it is to transport things to a flower show? We've all had flower show disasters occur in our cars. Um, with these non-green alternatives, I think that's going to be a bigger issue. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it lead to there being more shows that give people time to produce their own designs at the show, which happens at the bigger shows. If you entered the bigger shows in places like Toronto, Canada Blooms, um, you're given a, a certain amount of time to show up and enter your designs. Definitely, I would say the chicken wire is the most challenging for this parallel design, meaning that in future, I likely wouldn't use chicken wire to create a parallel design. I would likely stick with um, the agrawol or better yet, the Kinzan. Now with a parallel design, we've got our groupings. There's enough room for the butterflies. They're related, they're thematic. Um, vegetative should be as it appears in nature. If you're going to do a decorative one, you could combine um, bamboo stakes and different things. Now basing is covering up your mechanics. Uh, and the idea in a parallel design is the basing should complement. And what I'm using here for basing is um, a little bit of natural occurring moss. Because to me, that's one of the first green things you see in the spring is the moss. And the idea with the basing is it shouldn't detract from the design, but it should carefully cover your mechanics look natural. Now, another uh, material that works really well for basing is geranium leaf. Geranium leaf is easy to work with as a basing material. But as I said, you do need to be able to poke a few holes in your oasis substitute here, this agrawol. Um, and stick your geranium leaves in. I'm not going to completely do the basing because it's time consuming. But the idea is you end up with this very natural spring looking design. Your mechanics are hidden. Your chicken wire is challenging. I will give it that. So the idea is a very low, natural color and things that sort of you would expect in nature to be able to see. So there's a Kenzan, agrawol, and chicken wire all in one design. So those are three things we talked about in the slideshow. I'm now going to pull up my large container here. I'm going to slide this uh, off to one side. There we go. So I've created this grid 
Now, depending on the size of your materials, the amount of materials is going to affect the size of your grid. I'm going to gain everything that I'm working with tonight, I went out and picked out of my garden. I have maybe a few leftover flowers from Easter I have with me. Just going to top the water up in here. as I emptied it so I didn't end up with the back of my car full of water. Greenery, I'm using, these are tulip leaves and they are off of a grouping of tulips that just don't bloom anymore and I haven't quite got around to digging them up yet, but um, they serve as greens first thing in the spring. Uh, the other type of leaf you could use, these are allium leaves. There's always lots of allium leaves per allium. So I'm gonna combine the allium leaves in with the tulip leaves. With the taller the vase, you're gonna to have to work a little bit more to get things to stay in place and not move with your grid. The advantage of the forsythia is it can go down almost to the bottom of the vase and hold. I have a little bit of uh, lovely juniper. And the beauty of juniper is you can work it a little bit. You can actually get it to bend and work a bit. And right now, the juniper and the cedar have got their spring color back. So everything's looking very bright and uh, bold and lovely and green right now. Just the last two or three days has made a huge difference. So all I'm doing is carefully placing things in between the grid. I'm using the side of the, the container to hold things a little bit. And again, this would be not something that you're going to try and uh, move around with. You are going to likely put it together, leave it together, and uh, leave it in place on a hall table on a hutch or a buffet. And again, I'm choosing daffodils just because I can. And I've got hundreds of them, literally hundreds of them have opened up in the last day. And I'm kind of feeding them down using the allium leaves as a bit of a trough to help hold them. So I have the white and yellow dafts. I'm gonna do them in a bit of a grouping. This is gonna be kind of a more modern grouping of daffodils. And on the other side, uh, one of my favorite daffodils that has just literally opened this morning is Tahiti. Um, and one of the things you can do with daffodils, and I don't have any extra skewers with me, um, but if you put a skewer in your daffodil, um, that would allow you to hold the daffodil on the bottom and still allow it to soak up water. I did some last night, left them overnight, and they were just fine. only had three of these out so I'm kind of limited by what we can what we can do with them and I'm going to put I'm going to use a little bit of good old perennial geranium again one of the first things that comes out in the spring but it's it's lovely it, it's it's great as a filler Low growing. There we go. 
And the other greens I pulled up today, good old ditch lilies, which um, in the springtime, you don't mind slicing a few of them off. These are growing in uh, a low growing spot in my front yard that was one of the first flower beds we actually put in. And some more geranium. Get out of my little container here. And again, the beauty with geranium is, you know, the roots, you just tidy the roots up a bit. Um, they've got some bend. You can use them to cascade a little bit down the front. So, again, very easy technique. Get out your roll of tape, green or clear, and uh, find a vase or a container, tape it up, and experiment a bit. Because there are going to be, with working without the oasis, there are going to be a few more challenges in terms of determining which plant materials are going to work best given your design and given your material. Certain things will definitely work in Kenzans. Heavier material, you need a heavier Kenzan. Heavier Kenzan, um, it's weighted. The agri wool, um, I have not tried using a large block of it like this, but I suspect in a, in a, a larger container, with holes in, I think the agri wool is going to hold up very, very well. And you can reuse it. You can take it apart and you can reuse it. Oh, I found one more Tahiti daffodil. There we go. So, very simple yellows, whites. It's a white container, which are hard to work with at times. But frequently, if you have a little bit of white in the arrangement, it seems to soften the tone of a white container. I'm just going to move this one off to the one side. So there's a grid, Kenzan, agarwool, chicken wire. What haven't we done? Well, let's see. Um, this one I pre. I pre-made because it would take too long for you to sit here and watch me. It's a structure. And what it is, is I've used a heavy Kenzan. It's weighted, very weighted. Some bamboo, some copper chicken wire, and some glass tubes, plastic tubes. They don't break. And I've created a structure, and this entire structure you could take apart and use all over again. Now, in terms of what am I going to do with this Kenzan at the bottom? Well, it's springtime. I would have this on the show table. I would have some, maybe a small plate under this. For the purposes of illustration, I won't bother with the plate. Just something to that you can set the foam on or set the... Um, moss onto and voila you've covered up your kenzan it looks very spring-like i went out to see what i had what else i had in the garden and i was thinking oh i like the idea of orange and purple complementary colors yellows and blues and these are all colors we see in the spring. And with the water tubes, you do have to keep it simple. It has to be to scale. You can't, couldn't put a honking big flower in here because it really wouldn't be to scale. If you wanted to do this on a much grander scale, that would be quite doable, uh, but you would have to have a more substantial structure. So my um, lovely pansies are just bursting the last couple days. 
really quite excited. And my Siberian squirrel is out. We'll add a little greenery. So we're going to go with blue and yellow. Oh, I have some delightful little tiny little daffodils. Look at the size of them. Very sweet. I'm not certain whether these are jet fire or tete a tete, but I'm thinking jet fire because they are so tiny. And the beauty is that you can adjust as you go, decide where you want things to sit. I'm looking to see what I had. I didn't have any ivy growing, but I had a little bit of vinca that's hanging around out front. So I can um, get some of my greens to kind of venture from one side to the other. The lime green, again, spring-like. My um, good old ditch lilies. But again, lime green or spring green. So I'm just adding a little bit of plant material. It doesn't have to be much. Your chicken wire creates some rhythm. So that's working with water tubes, chicken wire, a Kenzan, some bamboo structures. So you've got a little bit of everything and no foam. And a very, again, easy, easy design to do. And one that you could easily take apart to transport, take your water tubes out, have them in a container held up, um, take your structure, pop your water tubes in and freshen it up and away you go. If I'd had a piece of ivy, I likely would have looped a bit of ivy through it. My ivies don't seem to have survived the winter that well indoors. Um, this is what the, the agar wool holds water. Um, what it looks like wet, just dark brown. It does hold water well. You can take it out, let it dry out, and reuse it. Uh, so I started, I started this one, but I just wanted to show you a little piece of foam, not much. You can reuse it. It can actually be reincorporated into um, planters to hold water, that sort of thing. The little bits and pieces that you might shave off, just hold on to them. They can be mixed in with planter soil and things like that. So none of it goes to waste. Uh, it does biodegrade with time being it's, you end up with basalt dust and uh, the beet juice, of course, just would break down and become a, an organic, either in your soil, in your planters. So again, poke a little hole in, add your material and just, adding a few little extra bits and bobs of spring stuff here into this. Oh, here's the rest of my Forsythia. The rest of my Forsythia is hanging out over there. So, again, a very, very simple, you could create a very simple, it's almost a simple line mass design. 
Uh, all easy, easy things to work with. Disadvantage of the rigid type of mesh um, is your placement angles are a little bit limited, unlike the foam alternative, the Sidu, but easily enough done. These are my my Easter leftover Easter carnations, which will become a little side table design. It's a matter of cutting things on an angle, making sure your stems aren't too long so that they float up as you're working with them but long enough that they're into the water. And the beauty of this is it's very easy to add water into in it to, to see what it's doing. I'm gonna go back to my geranium, a little bit of my variegated euonymus. So quick cut, work things into the, into the mesh. Love the scent of this geranium this time of year, too. Twenty three degrees here today, which seemed a little surreal after the weekend and all the snow last week, but Mother Nature always likes to kind of keep us keep us on our toes in the spring. As with any other type of designing, always make sure you keep uh, the extra leaf material off the stems below the water, um, just so that you preserve your materials. And what else do I have left? Oh, I've got a little bit of Siberian squill. We'll go pink and blue in this design. The smaller the stems, the more delicate the stems, the harder it is to work with most of these alternatives. But quite frankly, if you've ever tried to work with Siberian squill in good old fashioned oasis floral foam, again, always very challenging when you're working with tiny delicate materials, which is where this grid, grid works beautifully because you can just pop them in. The greenery helps to hold things in place. So there's pink and blue, a little bit of bright yellow. So there are some examples of things that you can try. And I think it's just gonna be a matter of experimenting. And I think as we see show schedules being rewritten, we're going to find more and more schedules do go the no oasis green petrochemical based foam route. How they deal with agra wool, since it is classified as a floral foam alternative, that's something that I think you're gonna see written into show schedules in the next year, given that it's a new material that quite literally uh, has just really become available in the Canadian market this year. Uh, any comments, any questions, any experience uh, from any of you working with some of these different uh, techniques? I have a question, Penny. Yes, Marianne. Uh, where do you buy the floral tape? Uh, the floral tape, um, I would suspect Michael's might have it. Um, it's just a narrow green. It also comes in white and it also comes in clear. 
Um, I haven't gone looking for it for a number of years. Um, Madeline, uh, Linda, any ideas other than good old Michaels or knowing somebody who? I ordered mine from Britain, floral, floralmechanics.ca. No, dot uk, dot co. Okay, so Mine. Britain, Britain for, I'll get that, I'll get that email from yeah. Madeline. I um, had friend, I had, I had a friend coming over on holidays, so I uh, would just uh, order from him, he would send it to her and she'd bring it over. Okay. okay. So that's how I got it. But he's a very good organization and um, he's very interested in flower shows. He goes to WAFA and everything. Okay. Well, the other alternative is knowing someone uh, who happens to have a wholesale license at Hoffman's out of the Toronto GTA area. Um, but I, I would try Michael's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe even at a flower shop. Um, mm -hmm. You might. If you know somebody at a flower shop and you're really nice and you ask, you might get them to sell you a roll of it. <laughs> you're cutting it, you're cutting into their business. Um, that's the problem I've had with trying to purchase things directly oh. from Morris, like wire. Um, you know, when I've run out of wire, I've gone in looking for gauge 10 wire and they sort of, well, we're a little short right now. And I think, okay. <laughs> I just buy everything on amazon.ca. Okay, good on it. I, I just have Googled. Not Oh, I good idea, Linda. I, um, I just Googled it and you can get it at Michael's. Okay, yeah. perfect. There and we you go. go Amazon.ca as well. You can even get the floral glue there too. Okay, okay. the floral glue. Okay. Thank you. Um, the agri wool, I do know that Rose Odell has brought it in uh, with the OHA, and we're going to try and um, arrange orders a couple times. Each two or three times a year through the directors. So societies can put together an order. We order it, the OHA brings it in under their um, wholesale license, which we they have. And then the directors would distribute it out to society. So um, I certainly will follow up with that. That's actually how I ordered my agro wool. When I heard about the product, I just got a hold of Rose and said, I'll buy a case. Um, it's about six dollars a block. It's about the size of a regular piece of uh, floral foam, but it runs about six dollars a block. Uh, that includes your shipping and everything. So it is going to become, I think, easier to get that product. And uh, but in the meantime, if anybody really wants to play around with it, I'll sell you a block of foam for six bucks. And if you've got the old floral foam still left, we'll use it up. I mean, I've got some left in a carton. I, I'm, I'm going to use it up. Um, I mean, what's the point of throwing it out in the garbage? Because it's, you know, it's not going anywhere. Um, I, I would use it up. Uh, and I might save it and use it in the bottom of planters as a, you know, for taking up space. Uh, but it will, you know, it, it really doesn't, uh, it really doesn't break down. Any other thoughts, any other questions on uh, alternatives, new, uh, new ideas? I mean, some of these are very old fashioned designs, simple little mass design. You just adapt it to the different materials, simple line design. That's a variation on a modern design. And it's just adapted so that uh, we aren't using as much of the non-sustainable materials as we move forward. I, know I really so liked your, I liked your bouquet of sticks with the daffodils, I think it was, amongst yeah. them in the slideshow. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. I, that to me would be a really, really nice and easy one to do uh, just to get a nice clear glass container that's quite low, just go out and collect a whole bunch of branches, cut them at slightly different lengths. Uh, you could use red twig dogwood if you had access to that, uh, mix it in, and then just drop your daffodils or your tulips in, and uh, it would be a lovely long lasting uh, display. And then you can reuse it. You pour the water off, 
let it sit, let it dry. Next time something else is in bloom, like dahlias, you pull it out, add water, put new flowers in. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you everyone for uh, coming out this evening. And a big thank you to Howard, who uh, is very patient with me in Zoom and trying to set up demonstrations and getting lighting right or not. Um, Howard's very good at that. We really, really appreciate it. He's made it possible for us over the last two years to continue to stay in touch with people and to continue to do our floral arts by doing it online mm -hmm. and you know hopefully come fall things will be uh safer for us to get together in person and uh maybe we can play around a little bit more with all of these alternatives thank you penny that was great really good ideas okay well it's a pleasure it's always fun to play with flowers and it's always fun <laughs> to show others how to play with flowers it's fun thank to have you. flowers in the garden again <laughs> <laughs> thanks penny that was lovely oh you're most welcome do you recognize the vase <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> one of alice's vases she was part oh, yeah. of I, I, I thought. <clears throat> give it give it a try tonight um it's white it's tall a little bit of a challenge but a lot of fun with the white daffodils remember yearbook yearbook okay joan just uh flashed up the yearbook there i didn't bring my version with me uh beautiful cover thank you howard uh we're getting lots of compliments on that front cover we have about 10 copies left, so if you haven't reserved yours, get a hold of Joan as soon as possible. Lots of nice, nice pictures in it. It's really good quality. Print3 did a, a, a beautiful job with good quality paper. And the show schedule is in there. We are going um, to live in person, a live in person show in June at St. Andrews. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that. And I hope to see you out at the June Flower Show, trying out some of these techniques. Or Thank you, Penny. Flowers. <laughs> yes. Take care, everyone. Stay no, safe. No, no, uh, Penny. Before you go, can you please can you please send me Jones McKinnon's email address? Oh, yes, I can send it problem. to you. Okay, my my email address is look for Madeline. Just a minute, Madeline. Let me let me put it in while I am on here because it's easier. 